Welcome to the Escape Cast. I'm Cyrus Kirkpatrick. Cyrus underscore the underscore explorer on Instagram. Author of books like How to Quit Your Job, How to Make Money While Traveling, lots of other crazy books, metaphysical topics, sci fi fantasy, things that might not be your cup of tea. Nonetheless, I'm here with the first episode of The Escape Cast. It is 10 31, 2017, on Halloween. And it's about 112 days away until I begin my escape strategy. The escape strategy being getting out of Los Angeles, LA, as my one friend calls it, LA, and getting off to Indonesia, Philippines, Australia, and places like that, where I plan to perhaps indefinitely stay abroad and relocate to a lifestyle that is way better suited for me. And that's what this podcast is about, which is helping you do the same as well as chronicling some of my own experiences and adventures along the way. So in this episode, I'm going to talk a little bit about some reasons to go abroad, kind of a primer for the rest of the show as it goes along. So in the West, not everybody likes what the West has to offer. Living here in Los Angeles, there's incredible standards of living especially as a guy when you have to kind of take the brunt of the financial responsibilities and families. So if I wanted to have a family someday, which I mean, at the moment I, I, I really don't, but this may happen someday, living here in LA, if I want a nice house, I mean, I'm going to be dropping about seven to $800,000, minimally. If I just want an apartment some, someplace that I like, like by the beach, Costs about three thousand bucks for a cheap apartment out in Marina del Rey, if, you know, with with a, even a s- bit of an ocean view, upwards of four thousand, five thousand dollars a month, very easy. People I know who lead these lifestyles, they've either inherited lots of money, made a bunch of money from like a big insurance settlement, or you better believe they're working their asses off. And that leads to the next point, which is that in a place uh, like the West, big Western cities. It's a, it's a really materialistic, competitive culture. People, people live to work. You know, they don't work to live. Their whole life is their job. Uh, people I know out here in L.A. work two, three jobs. Personally, I work two, but I try to keep my um, hours per week down below 40. So I have you know, enough free time to do stuff I like to do. Um, although, you know, I also run a business, so that does eat up a lot of time along with my day job. But the point is, it's really difficult to get by these days in just one job when you live in a place like L.A. Your free time gets eaten up. So a lot of people, they don't do anything but work. And then the people who are taking some time out for themselves, what I tend to find is that they go off to use Netflix. And don't get me wrong, I love Netflix. I have a subscription. I watch all kinds of shows. I just finished watching Stranger Things season two. Great stuff. But my friends, people I know, when they're not working, they go home, they turn on Netflix, they pass out, they wake up, they go back to work, repeat process. Meanwhile, a lot of people come out here to LA thinking that it's going to be this glamorous lifestyle. In a way, I'm guilty of that too. That's why I ended up coming out here. And I still like LA, but these issues are serious and this lifestyle is just not compatible for me and it's not compatible for a lot of other people. A solution to that is to move to a country where first of all your dollar carries a lot more weight. You can get that beachfront apartment for instead of paying 3000 bucks a month, you're paying 600 bucks or less a month. When I was living in Pattaya, Thailand, I was paying about 350 a month for a little studio that was right by the ocean. And you definitely don't have to work two jobs. If you make some money on your laptop, you know, working four, five, six hours a day, that could completely get you by. And then you can spend the rest of the time pursuing your hobbies, hanging out with people, making friends, doing that kind of stuff. The next point I want to bring up is uh, romance. So this leads to an, you know, the overarching issue that we have with our social lives in the West when people retreat to Netflix. Uh, it's, it's a pain in the ass dating out here in L.A., That whole kind of materialistic work culture is married to our love lives. So, as an example, like I have a buddy who was judged because he drives a Prius. You know, Prius is a nice car. And so he had a 2011 Prius 
And this girl he picked up was like, why are you driving a 2011 Prius? You do know that there's a 2016 model, there's a 2017 model. What are you, some kind of bum? Now, it wasn't a deal breaker. I think he kept seeing this girl, although I would have advised him not to do that. But it kind of goes to show you the mentality that people have out here. Very superficial, very materialistic. On the other hand, there's a lot of cultures where it's just not acceptable to treat people like that who could be a romantic uh, suitor, at least from the male perspective. And, you know, there's issues with everybody everywhere you go. But in the places I've been to, whether that's Turkey or Southeast Asia or even places like Mexico, and I, I haven't experienced that. Generally speaking, dating becomes a lot more successful of an opportunity. And I'm not just speaking for the guys here. I mean, I've known women who've gone off to Bali and ended up, you know, marrying some hot Balinese guy who, you know, they maybe could have never found out here in the West. You know, a guy with values and things that they might be looking for that they can't find in our culture. Although, from my perspective, this primarily relates to men. And if your love life is stagnant, if you basically have no sex life anymore, because even if you do find a girlfriend, like it tends to be more work than it's worth or more expensive than it's worth, then you may want to head abroad and go to a culture where the romantic dating life is a little bit healthier, because I don't think it's very healthy in the West. Next point is, do you just feel out of touch, out of tune with Western culture? It's hard to describe, but it could be related to when you took a vacation a long time ago, maybe back in college, you studied abroad, you went off to Bangkok, you went off to Rio, Rio de Janeiro, some city for a little vacation, but you also found that you just felt way more attuned to the place than back home. And so you've always missed that location and you couldn't explain why. Well, the reason is that your personality probably matches that vibe a lot better than it does where you are now. This isn't everybody, you know, this is only a minority of the population. But some of us, we're not satisfied in the West and we have to get out. All that being said, it's not a pile of roses we're talking about. It's difficult. Hatching an escape plan, you have to be able to find a reliable way to make money. If not off your laptop, then you have to think about pursuing a career abroad, whether that's teaching English or being hired by a company that's willing to take on a foreigner or as I said being able to freelance consistently to make ends meet and also to be able to think about visa issues maybe the easiest way to get a visa is if you do get hired by a company and then they give you a work visa if your ideal place to live is again Thailand and you get hired on by a company, then you can live in Thailand as long as you want. Another type of visa is school and educational visas, but that might be a bit more expensive because you're paying to go to school. But people take that approach also. There's business visas, there's entrepreneurial visas, there's long-term residency visas, there's retirement visas, but all of this takes a lot of work and a lot of planning, a lot of strategizing. You also have to Make sure that the place you go to is the place you want to go to. That's why you need to do some backpacking. You need to visit lots of countries until you find a place that really resonates with the kind of culture that, that you like, that, that you can relate to. And that's the best way to make sure that you're making the right decision is to try these places out first. And then when all that's said and done, you may still really miss your home state, your home country, your home city. And that's why it's important to build a home base when you finally do make your escape plan happen. Because if you don't have some kind of stability, most people, except the real vagabond types, most people start to miss stability. They miss being able to hop in a car, drive to 7-Eleven, drive to Starbucks, you know, see their old pals hanging out at the pub, and they, you know, they, those, those things are a real factor. I mean, the last time that I was abroad for almost a year, you know, my last stopover was Tuscany, Italy, and I was out there in beautiful Tuscany and sampling some wine on top on this mountaintop town called Monteregioni, 
rather I should say, it was a hilltop town out in the out in the uh, countryside. And I was having a blast, but at the same time, the back of my mind, I just wanted to go home. I've been out for like almost 11 months, and I just wanted to hang out at the mall in my hometown in Arizona, or go back to the little room I was renting in LA. Why? Because I just got tired of just going from place to place to place. I didn't have this issue when I was living in Thailand because I was living in Thailand. I had an actual apartment and it was hard to leave. But the, the key was just that stability. And if you don't have any stability, then that's a difficult thing. So that's something to think about as well. In summary, it's not a walk in the park, it's difficult. But for some of us, hatching an escape plan, there's no other option. It's something we have to do. We have to do it for our own health and welfare and happiness. There are so many issues in the West these days that I can't even keep track of them. It's going to take this entire show to outline all of them. And that said, I mean, I still like the USA. And eventually, I'm probably going to have, ideally, a house somewhere like Southeast Asia in a house back home probably in Arizona and I'll go back between both places but you have to fight for the lifestyle that you want to have and under no circumstances should I do I think anybody is going to be happy in a rat race materialistic type of lifestyle the kind that I see here in LA where you get judged because you're not driving the newest model Prius when you have to work 80 hours a week to keep up with you know, not to, not to be a cliche here, but to keep up with the Joneses, when you have to pay, you know, more money than you're making to, to afford a rent, and you're just stressed out all the time, you're too stressed out to hang out with people, you watch some Netflix at night, and then you pass out, you wake up at 6 a.m., repeat the process, and this isn't a lifestyle, come on, guys. If you, if you want to get out, then you got to hatch an escape plan. Go somewhere that you can work 20 hours a week or less on your laptop and have more than enough money to get by. You can meet people, have an abundance of friends, an abundance of adventures, lots of things to do, plenty of romantic options, and opportunities to lead a simpler and happier life if that's what you want. And there, you know, there's some of these like high strong Wall Street financial Donald Trump types in the world. They don't want any of that. They want to live in the lion's den and they prosper and thrive where there is lots of chaos and fast-paced living and making money and all that type of thing and more power to them because, hey, they're the ones that kind of keep the economy going sometimes. But I'll tell you what, that's a small, that's like 1% or 2% of the population who can do that and, and thrive. And a lot of us, we need to have a more balanced lifestyle. So that's what having an escape plan is all about. And that's what we'll be talking about in this show. So if you like that idea, you want to hear more, then hit subscribe. I don't know who's going to listen to this thing. As far as I know, I'm just making this little show, podcast, whatever you want to call it, for my own amusement so I can get some thoughts out in my head and get them out public and you know share them. But I'm not expecting lots of people to listen to this. But I may be wrong. I may look back at this in the future and be like, oh, that's so funny, my first episode... You know, and I was being so pessimistic and skeptical. So, hey, you know, if, if you want to help make that future timeline the reality, then that would be awesome. So, again, hit like and subscribe. Or you can check me out at CyrusKirkpatrick.com. And I guess I'll see you next time.